Hey kids, we miss everybody out there. I hope you're doing okay at home. I wanted to make you some devotions every once in a while to dig into God's awesome word together. And for the next while, I'm going to read stories from the book of Ruth, or I'm going to read the book of Ruth to you, in other words. So stay tuned for those. I'm going to put them on Facebook and YouTube so that you can find them and look at them whenever you have an opportunity. And maybe I'll do a couple a week, but I miss seeing you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day, and here we go. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this morning, and I thank you for your work in our lives and that you are a big God who created the heavens and the earth and you knit us together in our mother's womb and that you are bigger than us being stuck at home. I pray that you would help us to draw closer to Jesus this time and love you and learn to love other people deeper and to obey you. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. So we are all the way through Judges. Remember starting in Genesis, and then we went on to Exodus, and Leviticus, and Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and then we learned about Joshua, and then we learned that Israel kept falling into sin, so God sent Judges. Well, this is the start of the book of Ruth, and Ruth is a Moabite, or a Gentile woman. And she is David's great grandmother. And the story of Ruth happens during the time of the judges. So we'll start with Ruth chapter one for today. And I have some pictures for you to enjoy. And here is a picture of Ruth and her group. We have Naomi here and a couple other people that I'll mention in this story. So let me start reading for you Ruth chapter 1. You could follow along in your Bible or just listen to the story. It says this, In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. A famine means there wasn't much food Farming wasn't going very well. It was hard to find food. And a man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab. And Moab is a cross from the Dead Sea. It is a desert country. It is known to Israel as a bad, evil land with evil people because they were doing things that were opposed to what God wanted people to do. And Moab is a mountainous desert region. So why he went to sojourn in the country of Moab, I don't know. It's kind of interesting to me though. So he took his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech and the name of his wife, Naomi. So Elimelech took Naomi, and the name of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrath Ephrathites from Bethlehem and Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there, but Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died. And she was left, or she remained with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. And I have an exclamation point by that in my Bible that I drew in because one of the laws that we learned when we went through Leviticus was that Israeli people were to marry Israeli people. And it was a sin and disobedience to God to marry someone of a different 
religion because that would cause people to possibly fall away. So God wanted people to have the same heart. And I think it's true today that you should not marry someone of a different religion because they can tend to draw you away. And say you love Jesus and you're focusing on Jesus. If the person you're thinking about marrying someday, their focus is on themselves or on Joe Schmo or something else, their heart's going to go towards that while your heart goes towards Jesus. And that'll cause a lot of problems. Now you'd hope if something happened like that, that that person would also follow Jesus. But be it as it may, God said, do not marry those from different religions. Marry within the family of Israel. So it says in verse 4, these took Moabite wives and disobeyed God. The name of the one was Orpha and the name of the other Ruth. They lived there about 10 years and both Malon and Chilion died or Killian, however you want to say that. Both of the sons of Naomi died. So Naomi's husband died and Naomi's two sons died. So that the woman remained without her two sons and her husband. So Naomi is in a rough land, the land of Moab, and her sons and her husband are dead. But she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out for the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law. And they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go return each of you to her, fa her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt kindly with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they have grown up so you can marry them? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter for me for the sake of that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. She had a feeling that she was being judged for turning away from God's people during this time and going into the land of Moab. And she did abandon her people at this time. But it might have been for survival because they heard there was food there. Who knows why? But they did abandon their people. So she was feeling like God was judging her and took her husband and two sons. Maybe she was right. I don't know. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again, and Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. She held her so tightly, kind of like a kid hanging on to a dad's ankle when he's trying to walk. And she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. My favorite verse in this section of Ruth 1, 1 through 18 is verse 16. 
it says this. Now I want you guys to memorize this verse. So repeat this again and again. It says, for where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Now, a Moabite is a Gentile. That means the nations. There's two types of people. There's Jews and Gentiles. And unless you're Jewish, you too are a Gentile. And if you're following Jesus and following the Lord, <clears throat> you and Ruth have a lot in common. You have held tightly to the Lord and you love the Lord's people. So you guys have a lot in common with Ruth. So when you memorize this verse, it's true of Ruth what she said, but also true of you. And I want to encourage you with that. And next time we will read a little bit more into the story of Ruth. If you have any questions or would like to leave a comment or a question for me to answer, leave a comment there and I will get back with you. Have a great day.